Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. And this is our top 10 reasons that The Last of Us 2 sucked. Only 10, huh? Well, we can do more. Yeah, later. <laughs> Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and ring that notification bell to keep up with all of our conversations that we are doing on this channel. And let us know what you think about this conversation down below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you ring that notification bell, and make sure to share this with everyone you know to help us beat that massive YouTube algorithm. So The Last of Us 2 is finally out, and the internet is ablaze, as uh, most of our generation loves to see it. Oh, yes. <laughs> and ablaze. I like ablaze. Without any further ado, my first point is that The Last of Us 2 sucked. Because we didn't know anything about Ellie and Dina's relationship. Not, no, and they never took time to actually explain it. No. Supp supposedly there's some more uh, context in Ellie's journal, which I'm not going to lie. I was so burnt out by the time that you know I even knew about it. I just didn't care anymore. Well, and the problem is is that you have these two young ladies who, who are, are very infatuated with each other. But nowhere in the mainline story, the cut scenes... The, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the best we get is the, the uh, dialogue, the dialogue, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the incidental, di the, the incidental dialogue. You don't know why they like each other. You know that they do, you know that they're attracted to each other. You can see that they're attracted to each other, but we don't know why Ellie wants to end up with this girl. We have no clue. No, the, I one hate that. That sucked. That's poor character development. The, the, one of the best scenes that even establishes, establishes them as a couple is when you find out Dina is pregnant and they're already well a couple at that point. Why? I don't know. Yeah. I don't no. know. I, I, I wish, truthfully, Naughty Dog should uh, go back to what they used to do and actually give a damn about character. So that way we can give a damn about uh, Oh, indeed. And uh, set up your characters. All right. <clears throat> My first point for today is what is up with the pacing with this story? Why is everything so jumbled out of order? Why are we getting the... Uh, Scenes that should have the, been in the front of the game that are in the end of the, the game. game and it's, vice versa. And it's just like, oh, hey, you know this person who died? Characters that waffle back and forth. But you know this person You know this person that died? Well, now you know, we're going to kill them. And now you should care. The pacing is all over the place. Yeah. No, I don't disagree with that. The pacing... It, 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 it was hard to know... Uh, the, 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 the emotional tone of this game at the time that they were doing the... Emo like, like what, what, what do you want me to feel here? Well, it, it's like, you know, you know that dog? You know that dog? Well, you killed it, so now feel really bad because you just played fetch with it. And it's just like... Yeah, but we know it died. You. Like, we know... Yeah, no. And that was yeah. that was something. That, the, the pacing was absolute and utter And just the, just the whole second half. It's, you know, you have Abby show up at the theater, and then now we just have to go back in time. And then you get, uh, you know, the flashbacks within the flashbacks, right? Where you're flashing back to Abby's day one, and uh, then you still get flashbacks. Yeah. And it's just like, I, stop. I, well, and yeah, yeah, the whole the second half of the game, the, the pacing was off. The pacing was so off, they forgot what characters were in what scenes for surprise effect. Because I do not remember Lev being in that I, scene. I actually have I to look at the footage I, because I don't remember him being there. I just don't. I don't either. I don't either. I think it was absolute garbage. Their pacing was terrible. They didn't know what timeline they wanted to set up. It was ungodly horrible. I think you are 100% right. Yes. And while we're on Abby, take yeah, it away. Yeah. While we're on Abby, our number three, Abby is a selfish character. Anybody oh, who plays this game understands this. No, she's not. You just don't like... Shut up. Okay? Abby... Goes on a revenge hunt for herself. Abby only uh, helps uh, Lev and, uh, and, and Yara. big sister Yara yeah. uh, to make herself feel better. Abby then decides to, um, to keep this somewhat friendly, have relations with a guy to make herself feel better when that guy is obviously dating a pregnant woman who is her friend pregnant as well. Pregnant with his child, by the way. It's she, not like he just she started only dating her to does step in. No. Things, she only does things to benefit herself. She goes on a revenge hunt to benefit herself. She only goes after Ellie to benefit herself. She does nothing to benefit herself. Everything is to make her feel good and for her to redeem herself. Yes. I mean, Abby is 100% a selfish character. I cannot get behind her. I can't get behind self. Everything, like everything she does is for the benefit of herself and often hurts the people around her. Period. 
And it, and it does. And it does. And I, I, I think anybody who, who thinks that Abby is not a selfish character is not paying attention to the characterization that they give her. Well, in but the it's game. the same thing that Joel did. No. No, it's not. Joel's Joel's motivation was out of love, not revenge. There's a difference. I mean, there no, is. it's his own selfishness. No, actually it wasn't. It, 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 play The Last of Us one. Play The Last of Us one and you know, pay attention. Do that critical thinking thing our teachers tried to get us to do. <laughs> pay attention. And no, and speaking of character motivations, our number four is we don't get much of them. Tommy, in particular, seems to change his motivations depending on what the scene needs him to do. We have Ellie, who is out for revenge for Joel, but you get nothing about her motivations on, you know, why she's doing this thing. They're all paper thin. They are I don't all know why paper Dina, thin. I have no idea why Dina went with Ellie other why than... Why did Jesse show up? What why, loyalty... Yeah, why, why did Jesse show up? Oh, you think I'm going to let you do this by yourself? Cool. We why? established what that is your this friends connection? in the beginning. Why are you such good friends? I don't know. I don't know why Establish you did this. And, you know, just speaking in broader terms, what what is Isaac's goal? You know, the whole leader of the wolves, the group that Abby belongs to? What are the Scar's goal? What's their thing? I don't know any of that. Why are What's they at war? What's Abby's goal? We spend 10 hours with Abby. I still have no idea why Abby wanted to save Lev and Yara, not at, a clue. At best, you could say it's redemption, but redemption for what? It's never explained. Is she trying to redeem herself for killing Scars in the past, or is she trying to redeem herself for killing Joel? What is the motivation here? Yeah, no, there is... Uh, and also, what is Ellie's motivation for going after Abby again at the end? Yeah. Because Tommy yelled at her? Yeah, and that was the that, thing, that, is Tommy's motivation seemed to switch. Tommy went after these people because he didn't want Ellie to go after these people, and then by the end of it... Tommy wants to yell at Ellie for not going after these people. What in the hell? Character motivation. You, you, you can't is just flip flop like that. Over the place. Oh, and it's none awful. of it makes awful. any freaking sense. And that goes none into point number five, which is our characters. Take it away. Oh, the B characters. Yes. Why were B characters even in this game? We don't learn anything about the B characters. We don't learn anything that's more than skin deep about some of them. Well, let's take Lev, for example. And I know that people might hate me for saying this, but what is his character outside of being trans? I don't know. I don't know. And that's skin deep because guess what? I don't care how somebody wants to live their life. No. You know what? No. I want to know. You know, it'd be really cool to see the emotional scarring to understand what Lev went Especially through. Especially coming from the maybe, fact that he's from the Scar, you know, yeah, faction. Maybe yeah. to see how Yara was dealing with that. Uh, but right. we didn't get to see any of that. No, it's just this is what happens and now this is just a thing. And don't worry about who this person is or why well, he's, you know. Mel, character was paper oh, thin. Yeah. Oh, and pa character was paper thin. Isaac, we got Isaac for all of about, what, 45 seconds throughout the whole game? Oh, if, I, if, if, I can wrap up, if I can wrap up the B characters in, you know, a single, you know, a couple words or less, it's Lev, trans, Yara, big sister, Isaac, leader, you know, Abby, you know, dick. No. <laughs> yeah. uh, Tommy, confused. You know, no. Ellie, Dina, re you know, vengeful. Dina, you know, Ellie's girlfriend. Yeah. Give me more. I can't Je Jesse, just... Ellie's friend. I should not be able to sum up these characters in less than a phrase. You know... Yeah, no. The, a word the, to the, a the, few. The, 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 the characters in this game, and primarily the B characters, I don't even know why they have B characters in this game. No, 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 no. no. I, I, I genuinely think that they were just like, just throw people in because if there's more people surrounding these characters, people will think that there's something going on. And I just... Th yeah, it no, was, it's awful. It's paper-thin characterization all the way around. And that brings us to... Point number six. Story things just seem to happen. Like, there's a lot of winky dinks in this story. Like, oh, dear. you know, Abby just magically Where finds Joel. Where in the hell did Tommy come from? Oh, I'm yeah. That blows me away more than the Abby finds Joel thing. Where do Tommy and Jesse meet up to meet up with Ellie at the aquarium? No, but the plot just needed them there. And uh, so this is my big thing is things just happen. Like, why was Abby captured at the end of the game? Because we just needed her to be, you know, I guess more sympathetic to see her broken in a way. Like, but these things just happen. I don't even know who the quote unquote rattlers are. And that is still a name I only know from the subtitles. Yeah, I know. Well, well, guys, if you would have just played the game and found everything there was in the game. I'm not dude, spending 40 hours on dude, this. Dude, it was all we played for 22, 23 hours. Yes. You literally could find out and do and do many, many, many just reviews the sheer off contrivances. of 10 hours of The Last of Us. Just the it's sheer just contrivances. Hours. 
to get through the first game and we could write papers on the characters, the motivations, even the B people, characters. People have. You could, and, and, and in this game, you I can't do that in 22 hours. What in the absolute hell? It, it is literally the Game of Thrones season eight um, that, you know, things just happen. People are just in places where the plot needs them to be. They do things that the plot needs them to do. And well, it just, it, it's all so thrown together that it's just like, and eh, we need this to happen, so throw X character into Y scenario. It'll work. And that brings us to point number seven, which is the character betrayals. Yes. The writing team had no idea what to do when it came to any of these characters. They completely betrayed Joel. They made him do things that were not part of Joel's character. Hi, stranger. I'm Joel. I hope people aren't pissed at Here's me. Here's my social security <laughs> number. Yeah, <bro. laughs> Here's where I live. By the way, like, I'm surprised he didn't, like, be like, hey, if you're going to kill me, you need to kill the girl that I, you know, helped harbor over oh, here. Oh, by she's the way, the she's totally going to dick you over, too, so you should probably take her yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, come just, on, just, Joel. Come on. Just, like, I am surprised that didn't happen. The character betrayals in this, Maria was barely in the game. Tommy flip-flopped so hard and was barely in the game, and he was only in the game for a plot device, which the plot device, he wasn't even a good plot device. The no, he was just it. there to say whatever the opposite of what Ellie yeah. wanted to do. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean... The, the, just the, the 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 and then all of Abby's friends. There was no point for Abby's friends to be in the game because they were all betrayed. They were all killed. And then oh, here care about them. That's character betrayal. You didn't care about your, your characters. You completely betrayed established characters, and you even betrayed your new characters. Now I don't even know how you betray your new characters, but that's what you did. I I, I I really don't get it. I really don't get it. And here's the thing that you know really pisses me off. And this is our number eight. Is all of these things lead up to the marketing lying to us? They directly manipulated trailers. They directly oh manipulated gosh. all of the reveals to make it seem like we got a different story. They swapped out the character models for Ellie and Joel in the trailers to make them seem older so you didn't know it was a flashback. Mm -hmm. They deliberately swapped Jesse and Joel out for in the same scene. Like the scene where uh, mm -hmm. Joel and I, we covered this in our review, where you know she has the hands come over her mouth. That's Joel in the trailer and Jesse in the game. That is a lie. All well, not only that, lies. but they showed a bunch of pictures from flashback scenes where they deliberately de-aged the characters to make it look like we were getting a different game. Yes. What? What the hell? Yes. They swap out the older. They swap in the uh, younger character models, so it's a flashback as opposed to the older ones. We saw, you know, older Ellie and older Joel in those scenes. Well, because they they genuinely the marketing team they was didn't like the only reason people are going to buy this game is to see the continuation of Ellie and Joel's story. They marketed that that way. It was not Ellie and Joel's story. It was not a continuation. It was of Abby's story, and Abby's story was poorly told too because they still lied. Abby and I know people. The the, the internet's going to be a blaze. Abby could have been a good character. In a game that was titled The Last of Us, but had nothing to do with Joel and Ellie. She needed her it, own game. It, all, it, all of the stuff with the, her. The, the reason she is hated is because of the Ellie and Joel thing and what and yes. how they tried to loosely tie her into that. And if they had just made Abby's game and Ellie's game as two different games, like Abby's story could have been fantastic had it been like a Lost Legacy spinoff, standalone type thing. Yeah. Yes. All right, which brings us into number nine, which is all yours. Mm, which one's number nine? Uh -oh. What was the point of all of this? There was no point. There was no point to this game. Yeah, yeah, there's no point to this game. Point number nine, there's no point. No, I don't care. It completely undermines everything that happened in the first game, and we have no clue why they did this? No, and by the end of it, nothing is accomplished. Abby gets, you know, her revenge on Joel, which causes the death of her entire group of friends and her turning on her own faction rather suddenly, too. Mm -hmm. And then Ellie goes after her again, only to let her go. There is no point. Everything that happened would not have happened if they just stayed you, you look at The Last of Us 1. What was the point of The Last of Us 1? The point of The Last of Us 1 was an older, grizzled man finding finding that he could care for human existence again. Yes. A young girl finding out that someone could care for her in the capacity of, uh, uh, the of a family member. The, the motivating plot point of getting Ellie to the Fireflies because she's uh, immune was simply a backdressing to that. Point. Exactly. And in this game, revenge. Nobody Re grew. Well, and it's so. It's revenge. But revenge in this plot is the same as Ellie being immune in The Last of Us 1. The problem is, is they didn't have anything else to build on top of it. 
No, because none of the characters grew. Nobody grew. And Ellie and, and Ellie doesn't grow by the well, but she grows by the end because she no, she doesn't. No, she, she doesn't. Out. She completely blows away everything that she ever cared about and lets her go anyway. She lost Joel. She lost Jesse. She lost Dina. Not Dina didn't die, but she did Dina leave with the baby. JJ, which by the way, yeah. little JJ, dude, you adorable. deserve to be in a better game. Adorable. adorable. <laughs> he was adorable as a guy as a guy who's got kiddos. That was an adorable like computer generated baby. What little JJ? You need a better game. You need a better game. Little JJ, you need to be in The Last of Us 3. I'd play a game with Little JJ. Oh, God. I don't even know if I'd play another one at this point. And no. That's, and that's oh. because our final point, this will probably carry us through the end here, oh. is number 10. This game is damaging to its predecessor. This game makes playing The Last of Us 1 worse. I, that was my biggest fear with this. And that was my biggest fear, is that this game is going to do something so irreparable. It is going to do to The Last of Us, the first game, what The Last Jedi did to Star Wars. Yes. And it did. And, and it, it did. did. And it did. And it's, it's the way they handled Joel. It's all these points that we've covered here. We have a fancy little book. Yeah. Um, all of these things that we've talked about all lead up to this because it makes playing The Last of Us 1 worse. You can no longer enjoy that you know, surrogate, you know, familial relationship. You can no longer enjoy the adventure. You can no longer enjoy that cross-country adventure without knowing that, well, Joel does something stupid to get his head bashed in. You know, Ellie does something stupid and loses her family. And Abby is just a literal... Well, and that's the thing, right? Piece is of crap who Ellie gets the people around her, her the killed. The point of the first game was that Ellie gains family. Ellie is now a part of a family, Here, here's and the Joel thing is you, a part of a family. Here's the thing you might not know, because I don't think we played uh, Left Behind here, but Ellie's an orphan. She lives in an orphanage, or the, like the military barracks. Where yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. And her only family is Riley, her first girlfriend, or at least, you know. Interest, yeah. Yeah, and so, but she loses her. She has no family and finds one in Joel, and yeah, she might be pissed at Joel for... And by the end of the, this uh, game... Ellie loses her family. Wait, so in the first game, she gains family, and in this game, she loses family? Should it be flipped? How in the... It, it sh, if, they, sh, if they planned a sequel, and this is the you know big thing, is I don't think they planned a sequel. Mm -mm, no. And I don't think they should have. No. No, I don't think they should have planned a sequel. I really don't. I think that... I, 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 if this is what they're going to give us, is this is the narrative they're going to go with, if they're going to do the, the, the character destruction that they want to do, and if they're go literally going to just go, the first game didn't matter, and they, and they missed the point, and it's obvious that they came out and said Joel was the bad guy in the first game. He did everything he could to protect this little yes. girl. He did everything he could, even though it started out as just a job for money and it became something more to him. He's yes. still a bad guy. Because reasons, and this game horribly, horribly, horribly damages the first game. Oh no, and it's and you know I know the debates, right? Is that well, what Joel did to the Fireflies, and I keep hearing this thing is that he took revenge on the Fireflies. There's no revenge; it's prevention. Joel never actively went after any of the Fireflies. He defended himself in all of the instances. When, when they said, you know, when he kills that, uh, that one guy who, by the way, was a massive dick, you know, to find where Ellie is, then the Fireflies come in and they shoot on sight. Dude, Joel didn't even kill the Robert guy in the first game. It was Tess. It was Tess. What the hell? The amount Joel of Joel didn't even kill Joel. Never in that w that I saw ever actively, with the exception of when his now surrogate daughter was taken from him. Yes, who literally, and he the, 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 that only, the only time you time see he, just how dark this man can get is when Ellie is captured by David and he's interrogating those two. And he was trying people. to get her back to make sure she was safe. He by the was way, are we, for, are we by forgetting her that? Safety. Are we forgetting that they were cannibals too? Like they were cannibals. Yeah, they were going to eat Ellie. But Joel's a bad guy. That's the problem. This game, it, it just, it, it damages. And they, they it just, damages they, they doubled it, down on this well because he, you know, sacrificed the cure of humanity. We don't know that. No, we don't. And that's the problem. Is but that that's, the, that's the train they run with. They come up with so many contrivances. They come up with so many, you know, character betrayals to try and fit this all around it. And it's, you know, if you have to try this hard to prove somebody's evil, they're probably not. I, I yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with that. So... 
Thank you guys so much for watching. A drink oh, we with still prison. got like 30 seconds. Oh, buddy. I know. We, well, we beat the clock on this one. Wow, that's a first. <laughs> that's a first. Yeah, the unspoken third member. But thank you all yes. so much for watching A Drink with Crazy. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell down below to watch some more of our conversations. We will probably be doing some more Last of Us 2 videos because we haven't quite uh, cleared the souls yet. So oh, you stay can see it. You can see it on our stream. <laughs> oh my God, it's bad. Even our uh, our official third member. Member, Mr. Convoy Bebop has said that he had to check out from the stream because we look too defeated. <laughs> um, so, so don't forget to check us out on Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, which Twitter is pretty much me because this guy won't touch Twitter. I and try that not to. is the infamous clock. And again, thank you all so much for watching this. And, and please, tell us your top 10 reasons yes, for hating absolutely. this game please in the comments. Check out our Last of Us 2 review, the full review, spoilers, uh, non spoilers in the beginning. Kind of late for this one. Down in the descriptions. Down below. in the description. Spoilers at the end. We go for an hour. Yeah. It's great. It's great. It's great. Check it out. It's Link great. in the description. Yeah. So go to that description. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Don't be Abby. Cheers, and guys. Cheers. Have some <laughs> motivation, please. Yes. All right. Later, everybody. Later. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.